Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. How are you? I realize it's been a little while since we've done a YouTube video, and so I'm coming back and doing one for you now, and I'm so excited to bring you the Ladybug Love. So for those of you who noticed in the class description, we have put a PDF on there for you to click on, and you can print it out with your computer. Um, what we are going to do if you do not have a printer handy is you're going to want to make two lines going down the center of your page and you'll want them to be about an inch and a half apart here and then each line that you make for your V's in the corner are going to be about an inch a piece okay so wanting to make sure that they're an inch and a half apart on both sides of your page and then if you are not great at drawing circles in the center you can always take a quarter and bring a quarter into the center of your piece my tile that I'm working on today is four and a half inches by four and a half inches with that said, the things that you are going to need for class are a Micron pen. I happen to have my PN, it's my favorite, but if you have an O1 or an O3, you're more than welcome to use it. You're going to need to have a puddle pen of some sort. I happen to have my favorite Castell. This is the brush pen. I love this one if you uh, are looking for a new pen and who isn't. Uh, this is a great pen because you can do large swaths of black coloring with that. It's a great pen. I highly recommend it. And then you will also need to have your white Prisma pen. We're going to be doing a lot of blending, sorry, pencil. And this is PC938. Great pencil to have, wonderful for doing color work, uh, great for blending. And then finally, you all know that we're going to be using uh, color pencils. I use Prisma, but if you want to use Faber-Castell or whatever you've got, go ahead and grab it. And then the last piece of the puzzle is the Signo Uniball White Pen. You know I love this pen for highlighting, and we'll do just a touch of highlighting in the very end. With that said, let's get started with the Ladybug Love. All right, so let's take a moment to get ourselves centered before we create today. Go ahead and take a comfortable seated position in your chair, however that best works for you today and let your feet touch down onto the floor. Let your hands rest onto your lap here, palms facing up. And if you're okay with it, allow your eyes to close for a moment. Softening through the shoulders, relaxing down through the arms, all the way through the wrists and the hands. Softening through the chest, and the belly, the hips and the thighs, the knees and the calves, all the way down into the feet. And then take a moment to let your attention fall on your breath. Noticing the breath as it rolls in and noticing the breath as it rolls out. So without judging, just acknowledging the breath rolling in and the breath rolling out. And let's begin to shape the breath just a little bit. Breathing into the count of four and exhaling to the count of six. Breathing in to the count of four and exhaling to the count of six. One more time, breathing into the count of four and exhaling to the count of six. And just taking a moment here to scan through your body and notice any places where you might be holding tension and seeing if you can soften in those spots. Sending your breath to the places where you feel you need it the most. 
taking in a nice deep ex inhalation here and exhaling it out. And then when you feel ready, beginning to wiggle through your fingertips and wiggle through your toes and gently blink your eyes open and add vision back into your practice. And let's get ready to make some beautiful Zen tangles together. All right, so let's get started here. I'm going to take this little guy away. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by building just a little bit more of the string for you as a guide uh, in this piece. So what I'm going to do is just barely here, touching the page, I'm going to just draw a line that goes right down the center of the piece here. And this is just going to help me to line up my ladybug wings. So you're going to see me just go through and I'm trying to find center the best that I can here. So that when I pull this nice and close, you can see just barely a line in between uh, those V's that we have there. Okay. Now, once you have that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to where I think the center is uh, in between these two pieces. And I'm just going to make a little dot. Those are going to be landing points for us. I'm going to do the same thing right here. So little landing points right here and right here and one right there. Okay. So with that said, go ahead and grab your micron pens and we are going to jump right into this. All right, so some of you have heard me say in some of my classes that I use letters to help people to make uh, to make their Zen tangles. And today what we're going to be working with is the letter D. And this, uh, this particular tangle is brought to you by the letter D. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in. And D is for delightful. All I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this corner and I'm going to start to touch down into this corner. So it's going to be a D that touches and comes right back in again, just like so. Okay? So that when I go and I do my next one, I'm just going to turn my tile and I'm going to do another D. So you can see I'm still working in the same quadrant here. So here I was, and then I turned counterclockwise. And I'm just going to go ahead and make another D. so that when you look at the piece and I zoom out, there's your first ladybug, okay? So we're going to do that again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come right up to the top again. So here I am, right here, coming in, touching, and coming right back to the center. Now watch, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my piece counterclockwise, and I'm going to make another D. So see how those two are touching? So it should look a little something like this. I'm going to go up to the top. Here I am right here, coming in, making the letter D, turning the tile counterclockwise, and once again, the letter D. Coming in towards the top here, you can see I'm right there, the letter D. turning counterclockwise here, the letter D. So now you have the beginnings of your ladybugs. Now what I love about this template is you could go in here and do all sorts of stuff with this. You don't have to make ladybugs. You could do all sorts of things with this. So I want you to feel like you can come back to this template and do all sorts of things. And I hope you will. And I hope you'll share it with us on the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook. All right, so we are going to continue on. If you need to pause me here, now's a great time to do it. All right, so many of you might know that before COVID, uh, I used to teach yoga, and I love the symbol of the lotus. The lotus is a symbol of transformation and overcoming uh, the darkness in your life, and I just love that 
symbol. So we are going to make a lotus-like flower coming out of the back side of the ladybug here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to just go ahead and do a very soft arc coming out and up like that. I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'm coming down about a quarter of an inch away from the top of each part. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to arc down and come right back to the center here. So I'm just going to go one and then here comes the other one. So I'm just going to go up just a touch and then go two. All right. So you can see that we've got the beginnings of a really nice little flower there. And then I'm going to come up and out away just a little bit and in this corner right here I'm going to make a little dot. Now some of you have heard me say this quote before, so a line is just a dot that went for a walk. So we're going to take that dot and carry it inward towards the piece and you'll see that I'm going to land about a quarter of an inch down. In fact, I'll make a dot here, get that to go, and I'll make a dot here. I'm just going to arc one and two. So there you can see I've got the beginnings of our lotus here. Now we're going to add a little bit more embellishment to the piece here and this is really fun. So I'm going to come into the side pieces and let's see if I can make this even bigger for you here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a tangle that I love. It's called V-line and all it is is just a V. So I'm going to come in right where this dot is and I'm just going to go ahead and make a little arc right in here and then I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to make a little arc right there and you can see that that creates kind of a V-like shape up in here. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So I'm going to come to where that line is and I'm going to go one and two, just like so. Once I have that, I'm going to come back into the center of the piece here and I'm going to make that V-line shape once again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go one and two and you can see that they're connecting in the center here. And then I'm going to come out towards the top and just make a triangular shape. So it's going to look a little something like this. I'm going to start right here and I'm going to go one and then two. Really easy peasy. Let's go ahead and do that again. So we're going to go to the next one and we'll do it again. So coming in right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to arc out and then I'm going to arc out over here. Once I have those, I'm going to go ahead and come right back into the center and right back into the center. Coming up and out just a little bit above these guys here, I'm going to make a little dot and then where I and right here I'm going to make a little dot to land. So we're about a quarter of an inch from the top. Making a nice arc. Once we have that arc, we're going to go ahead and do the V-line. So here we go. One and two. Coming over here. One and two. Easy peasy. We're going to do one more V-line in here, so I'm just going to come right here towards the top. One and two. And then we're going to create a really nice triangle-like shape in here. So you're going to see me come up and go one and two. All right, so go ahead, do those all the way around. If you need to uh, rewind and watch it again, you feel free to do so. I'm going to do these two and then we'll meet up together in a minute. All right, so hopefully you have something that looks a little bit like this. I'm hoping that you do. So we're going to start to work a little bit more with those ladybugs. I'm going to turn this piece so that it looks like it's on the diamond here. And I'm going to start to come into the wings and you'll see me just doing a little half moon in each of the wings here 
and you know I'm trying to keep the size of my dots fairly small let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger for you and the reason for that is because I don't want it to be confusing for when we do the head of the ladybug so I'm leaving the dots fairly small these are young ladybugs as it were um, so I'm going to go all the way around and I'm just doing three in each of these and then I'll come in and I'll start to do some puddling Puddling means you're just laying down ink in a certain area. Now if you want to pick up your puddle pen you can do that or you can work with your Micron uh, pen. So you're going to see me go through and fill all these in and then we're going to start to put on the head of our ladybug. Okay so hopefully you have a little something that looks like this on your page going to go ahead and we're going to start to put the heads on our ladybugs here and we want the heads to be a little bit larger than the dots that we did. Now if your dots ended up being large don't worry about it it's no big deal some ladybugs have big dots and some ladybugs have small dots they're just all different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to make just a little bit of an arc right here just like so and you can see it's a little bit bigger than the dots that I had earlier so I'm going to go ahead and do it again and I'm trying to be mindful and keep them all about the same size And so there you have it. All of those ladybugs now have their heads on and we're going to go in and we're going to puddle those heads in. So I'm just going to come in with my puddle pen and you can see why I love that brush pen. It just fills up the page and makes it so much easier to puddle in in large areas, right? So you can see how nice that works. I'm just coming in and going all along and doing these. So you go ahead, puddle in yours. I'll puddle in mine and then we'll start to work with the rest of the ladybug antennas next. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so there you have it. So we're going to do some antenna work here on the ladybugs and what we're going to do is we're going to be actually making little hearts and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So you remember those really faint lines that we put in between? These are going to be guidelines for us and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to come in really nice and close to these two ladybugs right here. You're going to see me come from the center and I'm going to come up and touch the circle and then I'm going to touch the ladybug like I'm making the shape of a heart. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to come up and touch and then I'm going to land right on my ladybug right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. So I'm just going to go up, touch the circle and then come down and touch the ladybug. Now once I have that, you can see there's the heart right in the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of Pronton with a tail on it. And then I'll do it again on the other side. So you can see that that has a really nice feel to it. Let's go to the next set and see how that works. All right, so here we are. We're going to come in, we're looking for that faint line as a guide, coming down in a way I would say about a quarter of an inch, coming up, touch the circle, come down and touch the ladybug. Coming over here, up, touch the circle, down and touch the ladybug. Going in and making your pronton with the tail, and then one over here. And you can see how easy that is, how nicely that comes together. So I'm going to go again one more time here, coming down about a quarter of an inch, making my heart touch and touch the ladybug. Over here, coming up and touch and down to the ladybug. Making the pronton either side and puddling in the tail. Last one right here. This is really fun. Coming down a quarter of an inch, 
touch the ladybug. One more. And then do your pronton. And one more time. Super fun, super easy. And then look at that beautiful pattern that we have in the center that goes around the piece. Love that. All right, you go ahead and finish up yours. I'll finish up mine. And then we're going to start to work on the outer edges of our piece. So I'm going to turn my piece on the diamond again. And we're going to start to focus on this guy right here. So let's go ahead and make him nice and large there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the top of the beautiful lotus that we've created here. And I'm going to make a line that's coming out about three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to stop. Actually, this feels like it's kind of like a half an inch. Now, for those of you who uh, really love doing poke leaf, this is going to be your favorite part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a little frowny face on the edge of that uh, that line and then I'm going to come in and do a little poke leaf right there. I'm going to come over to the side here and I'm going to do another line coming out. This one's a little bit shorter than the other and we'll go ahead and make a frowny face and then poke leaf and then I'm going to come over to this side and do it over here. So I'm just going to come up and out and once again another poke leaf. Really really fun. So I'm going to do that again on another one right here. Coming up and out about a half an inch I'm going to say. Make your little frowny face coming up from the bottom and a tip and right back in again. Coming over to the side, frowny face, coming right back in, and one more right here. So you go ahead and finish up yours on the, the last two, and then we'll meet back up in a minute. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of a border here and you'll notice that I left the border off and generally in Zentangle we start with the border but lately I've really been enjoying having my pieces uh, break free of the border a little bit. So what I've been doing is I'm coming in about a half about a half an inch or a quarter of an inch in depending on how much border you want and all I'm doing is I'm holly buying which means I'm going in between and underneath my leaves here. So you're going to see me come out the other side and I'm just auraing the outside of my piece here. So I'm just following this line right here. Now you can see that I've gotten right here so I'm just going to skip this, come right there. Now I know that the corner would be there so I'm just going to turn the tile and come over here and then once again all I'm doing is I'm looking for that outside line there and I'm going to holly bot or rather aura it coming in and then I'm turning my tile I'm looking for the spot where I'm going to land coming right in going right across coming over here. You can see that I'm coming out the other side of the leaf. Right over here. And when I zoom out, you can see there's the border for the piece here. So go ahead, finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then we're going to go ahead and we are going to puddle in that border. All right.
right, so I know I said we were going to go ahead and puddle in the borders, but I think we're going to wait for that. We're going to jump right into color here. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to start with our ladybugs first. And I'm going to grab for a few different colors here for the ladybug. The first color that I'm going to grab is this really beautiful red. It's a bright red. This is called permanent red. Oh, no, wait. I have carmine red in my hand here. I will take it. You know me, I'm always willing to work with what's around, so Carmine Red it is, PC926. But if you have permanent red around, you can use that, or you can use Crimson, uh, whichever one you want. I like this one because it's a really warm red. And then I have another red in my hands. This is called Crimson Lake. This is PC925. These two I'm going to work with together. So you can see this red's very warm and this red's very cool, almost like a burgundy, and this one's almost an orange. And then finally I've got these two colors in my hand here. So I've got this really pretty pale vermilion, which is PC921. And then one of my all-time favorites, this is Sunburst Yellow, and this is PC917, okay? So really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a nice uh, gradient of color here. You can see I've got my dark red, my medium red, an orange, and a yellow. So if you have that kind of coloring, go ahead and grab them. They don't have to be the same as mine, just in that kind of a gradient there, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start with that medium red. This is that warm red that I'm talking about, the carmine red. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by shading the piece and I'm just going to go ahead and make this one really nice and big. You can see that uh, my lead on this is nice and long and I'm going to be working on the side of my pencil to fill it in. So you're going to see me come in and just shade in the back edge of the wings here so that when we get in towards the center we're going to pause. So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of light in there and you know when I teach my color classes, one of the things that I talk about is that each color pencil is three different colors. So you have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. So it's all about the pressure that you're putting on your pencil. Now, if you are working with something that doesn't have a whole lot of viscosity to it, if you do your light, your medium, and your dark, it's hard to tell the difference between these two. And that's why I always like to have a darker color around to help me with shading, okay? So I'm just gonna go through here and do the ladybug wings here and I'm just going very nice and softly with that pencil I'm using the lightest pressure and you can see that that pencil is working in a circular like motion. It's really nice to get a good circular soft motion with that pencil because it gives you an even distribution of color. Okay. So once I have that, I'm going to go all the way around and do all of my ladybugs like that. So go ahead and do yours and then we'll meet back up and start layering. All right, so I've had a chance to go all the way around with this piece here and I'm going to continue to work with the same color, but now I'm going to start to apply a little bit more pressure to that pencil and you can already see that the pigment is getting a little bit darker for that ladybug. So I'm just layering my color a little bit and you can see that I'm going to leave the lightest color to be present, but I'm just going around the edge with a little bit of that darkness. So you can see that I'm just kind of getting that nice deep edging on here. So I'm going to go around to all of my ladybugs and start to put a little bit more pressure on and start to get a little bit more interest going. So you can see that I'm just working around the piece. So I've got that light kind of color and then I've got a darker color coming in. And we will be using that white pencil to really define this space, but you can see that I'm really trying to make it a very soft gradient so that it's not um, a really hard line of demarcation. So go ahead and start to apply a little bit of pressure around the edges and then we'll come back in and we'll add some of the orange. All right. 
right, so you can see how this is going. This has really got a nice feel to it. So I've got the orange in my hand here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very softly start to bring some of that in. Let's go ahead and zoom right in on this little guy right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start to bring in some of that orange right in here. Now you'll notice I'll still leave a little touch of that uh, lightness right in towards the center here. So I'm just adding a splash of that orange and I'm letting it dip in a little bit to some of that lighter red that we were working with. And what this is doing is, is it's giving us a little bit of a highlight. It's giving us a little bit of interest in the color. You know, if, if you're just working with one color, sometimes it can look a little flat. So I'm just going through and starting to add a little bit of that orange right into the piece. Now once I've had a chance to add a little bit of that orange, I'm going to reach for that yellow. So I'm just going to come right back here and grab some of that yellow and I'll come in right at the tip and start to bring in some of that yellow. And you'll see that I'm starting to work my way through the orange a little bit just to give it a little bit of a pop and I'll do the same thing right in here. And you can see that that makes for a really interesting feel on this. And you can let that kind of uh, scope its way out just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and come in over here as well and do the same. So I'm going to go all the way around and add the yellow and the orange all around with the ladybug pieces. And then we're going to start to work with a little bit of the darker red on the outside. Okay, you go ahead and do yours. I'll do mine and we'll meet up in a minute. Go ahead and remember, relax, enjoy. This is fun to color. It's fun to shade. It's my favorite part of doing Zentangle. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit to the piece here. I'm going to go ahead and start to add some of that darker red. This is the Crimson Lake. This is PC925. This is a beautiful dark kind of burgundy red. I just love this red. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to come in on the edge here and start to bring in some depth for that ladybug wing. And you can see that I'm working on the side of the pencil here. And I'm just going to go around that little dot right there and just carry that through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up the side over here as well, but then I'm going to pause. So you're going to see me leave some of that orange alone. I'll come back in right on the edge here and just give that a little bit more of a push. So I'm adding a little extra tension on that pencil just to get a glow of color. You can already see the difference in the dimension of color between the two. This doesn't have it and this does. And once we start working with the white pencil, this is really going to start to pop. So I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Going around the little dot right in here. And I'm just working my way up. And then I'll come back in and add a little bit of tension on it. And you can already see that's starting to really pick up. Okay, so go ahead, go all the way around and do yours, and then we're going to work on our blending next. Okay, so what we're going to start to do is work with the white pencil. So this is PC938. This is part of your Prisma color set, or if you have just a regular um, uh, color pencil set, it should come with a white. So you want to make sure that you're working with a white color pencil and not a charcoal color pencil because that will not work for you on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start inside of the light first and you want to make sure that your your pencil is nice and clean so it's not going to drag any other color in there. And I'm just going to start by going in and blending the yellow with the orange and then watch, I'm going to start to pull back to where the orange is meeting that light red. And you can see that I'm working the pencil in that circular-like motion to get a really nice blend here. 
and then once I have that I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to blend all the way back until I get to that darker red and I'm even going to pull that darker red in. You can see that that pencil pulls it in. Isn't that so amazing to just watch that that nice blending technique. So you can see the difference between here and here. Look at how much more soft and uh, transitional that is versus how this has a little bit of a harder transition. So once again, I'm going to clean off the tip of the pencil and then I'm going to go ahead and start in the beginning. So you always want to start in the light first and then work your way back into the dark. And please make that your mantra, starting in the light first and working your way back into the dark. Otherwise, you'll pull the darkness forward and that's not what we're trying to do. So you can see that I'm working my way back and into the dark. Just getting right in there. And you can see how beautifully that blends right in. So I'm just working with it until I get it to where I want it to be. And I really love the way that that looks. It's got a nice softness. For some reason, I'm getting a little bit of glare around that, that little um, dot there. But look at how nice and clean that is. It has a beautiful, uh, almost watercolor-like quality to it. So we're going to go around and we're going to work with all of these butterflies in that white pencil. Remember, we're going from the light into the dark, not from the dark into the light, okay? Just because we don't want to pull that darkness forward. Go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine, and we'll start to work on the lotus flower. All right, so this is really starting to come along. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to focus on the lotus flower um, that is in the back of our ladybug here. So I'm going to start to work on these pieces right in here and in here. Now you can see that I've picked up in my hand my gray pencil. This is my favorite for working with because working with graphite and being left-handed, I end up wearing it on the side of my hand. So this is PC1065, one of my favorite color pencils in the Prisma color set, can you tell? And this is the 70% cool gray. Now if you don't have this color, you can always pick up the uh, the 50% warm gray. That's also a really beautiful gray and it has a little bit more taupe in it which is really really interesting to look at. So if you don't have the 60 um, or rather the 70% you can always pick up the 50% warm gray. And if you don't have any of those you can just use graphite. It's no big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bringing in some shading into the piece here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right in the tip of this wing right here. And you can see that I'm just going to add a little bit of that gray right in here. Very, very lightly. I'm not adding a ton. I'm going to go in again and I'm going to come in right here and add a little bit more. And you're going to see me come up about three quarters of the way. And I'll do the same thing over here as well. So really, really light, like you're barely touching the page, yeah? And then I'm going to go ahead and go on right here and right here. And then right here on the tip. So this is just giving this definition and differentiating it from the main part of the lotus flower that's right here, okay? Now, once I have that lightness there, I'm going to come in with a little bit of darker pressure or heavier pressure, and I'm just putting it right into where the tip of the lotus is. Just getting right in there. lighten up as I come up a little bit. need to have a little bit of differentiation there. And then once again, right in here and right in here. Okay? So that's all we're going to do. Oops, I skipped one. There's always one that gets away. 
So we're going to go all the way around and do all of the lotuses just like that, okay? You go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine, and then we're going to come back and do some blending there. All right, so you can see that I've already had a chance to go all the way around and get those going. Now I'm cleaning off my white pencil because I'm going to be using it for blending here. And I'm coming in right on this guy first. So let's go ahead and just zoom right in. So you can see that my transitions here are a little rough. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the light first. So I'm always starting in the light and getting a nice little blend. And then you can see that I'm pulling into the dark and getting that to soften up just a little bit. So cleaning it up and then working in the light first and then starting to dip down into the dark and just getting that color to come in. And you can see I'm using a medium tension here as I work. So just working in that circular like motion, moving that color around and then starting to dip into the dark. And you can see how that really gives us a real painterly like feeling versus over here. So much more scratchy, much more soft. Yeah. So going into the light, and then dipping into the dark. And same thing over here. And remember, working that pencil in that circular like motion is going to give it a really nice, even distribution of color. Okay? So go ahead and do all of your pieces, and then we'll come back in and start to work on the lotus. Alright, so I'm really loving the way this is looking. It's coming along quite nicely. So we're going to start to add in a new color palette in here. And I'm really looking for some nice, deep, rich purples here. And you're going to see me come in with this really interesting color combination. I have uh, one of my favorite colors, lavender. And then I also have process red in my hand, dahlia purple, and then I have that same gray that I started with. So let's talk about the colors here. So in my hand I have PC934. This is lavender, PC934. Then I also have PC994. This is that really beautiful process red. It kind of looks like a magenta. And then my favorite color in all of the Prismacolor sets, this is the Dahlia Purple PC1009. Mm, <laughs> Cat's got my tongue. <laughs> and then, you know, of course, I'm still working with that gray color. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for a light, a medium, and a dark purple, and then having my gray nearby. So if you've got a light purple, like a magenta color, and then a violet-ish color, that's what we're looking for. So if you don't have the same colors as me, don't worry about it. We're just looking for the light, medium, and the dark. Okay. So what I'm going to do in here, this is, you know, more gemstone-like, so the, the rules do not apply as normal. I'm going to come in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work on this left-hand side for a moment. I'm going to come in with that lavender and just very, very lightly bring in that lavender. And then at the tip of it, I'm going to press a little bit harder and you're going to start to see a little bit more depth come through with that lavender. Okay, now once I've had the chance to do that, I'm going to switch over to my process red. And I'm going to bring that process red, this is that magenta like color, right next to the lavender. And it really gives a nice juxtaposition of color in here. Once again, I'm going to press at the bottom and really get a nice deep red in there, that process magenta red. And that starts to give it that gemstone-y type feel to it. Now I'm going to come in towards the center here and I'm going to start to bring in a really beautiful dusting of that darker purple. This is the Dahlia purple. And then I'll come in and I'll press nice and hard on that. And that's going to give this a really rich kind of amethyst type feel. Now once I have that, 
I'm going to go back out and I'm going to grab a little bit of that process red and bring it over here. And you'll notice I'm going to leave a little bit of light towards the top. See how I'm leaving a little white there? And I'm going to bring in a little bit of darkness right on that edge. Now I'm going to switch and I'm going to bring the lavender over here leaving a little bit of light up at the top and then pressing a little bit harder at the bottom. And then finally, I'm going to reach for that gray that we were working with up in here. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of gray on either side right here and bring a little bit of tension and then a little bit of gray over here and a little bit of tension. So you can see that that really starts to give this a really neat gemstone kind of feel. So I'm going to go all the way around and do that very same thing on each one. So you go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine, and then we'll meet back up and do some blending. Remember to relax in your shoulders, let your breath be full, and just enjoy yourself. All right, so we're going to start to do some blending here. And what this is going to look like is, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this little guy right here. So I'm going to come in with that little white pencil first, and I'm going to start to work with that process red. So you can see that I'm going to come right up in here and start to blend these guys in. Right in here, right in here, just to get a real nice softness. And I'll clean off my pencil and start to work in the lavender. And I'm going where the dark lavender meets the light lavender. And then I'll come into this area right here where that lavender is. And then finally I'll start to work in where the dahlia purple is. And you'll notice that I'm starting where the light is meeting the dark. And I'm just working my way down into the dark. And trying to leave most of the light up at the top here. The final component will be to clean off that pen or that pencil and start to work with the gray right over here. So I'm just going to dip in and grab that. So you can see that that gets a really nice blend in there. It's really nice and soft. So go ahead and do your blending all the way around. You can see the difference between this one and this one, right? It has a very scratchy texture, whereas this one has a much more creamy texture. So go ahead and do yours. I'll do mine and then we'll come back in and we'll start to work with our poke leaf. Alright, so I'm going to start to add in some new colors into the palette here. I've got a light green and a dark green that I'm going to be working with. My very favorite light green of all time is the Lime Peel Green. This is PC1005. This is a great green. I love this green. It's very earthy but very bright. It's almost like a chartreuse but it has more earth tone in it. And then the grass green is a great companion to this green. It has a little bit more of a bluish tint to it, and that's PC909. So you can see these two are really quite lovely together. But just remember, if you don't have the same colors as me, just looking for a light green and a dark green is just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come right into these little poke leaves down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a really nice soft base for that particular leaf. Now once I've got that really soft base in there, I'm going to come in at the tip and start to bring in some of that green. And I'm going very, very lightly because this has plenty of pigment in it. And you can see how sharp that lead is. You want to make sure that you're all sharpened up. And then at the tip, I'm going to press a little bit harder, just like so. So you can see that that gives it a little bit of pop. So I'm going to go around to all of my leaves, all the way around the piece, and do just that. You go ahead and do yours, and then we'll meet up and start to talk about the background color. 
Okay, so I've had a chance to go all the way around, but I want to talk about blending these poke leaves just for a minute. So you can see that I kind of have a rough transition right here. It's a little bit scratchy and a little bit rough. And you can see that I have my light green in my hand here. This is that lime peel green. One of my favorite tricks is if you ever have a rough transition, you can always go back to the lighter color and start to just buffer the edge of where the light meets the dark. And you can see that that softens the edge quite a bit. So if you don't want to use a white pencil, you can always come back in and just use the lighter color to buffer it out. And the reason why this works is that because there's less pigmentation in that lighter color, there's more wax. So it can move the color around and give it an easier transition, which is something that I love to do. So this is something that you could go ahead and try in your piece just by doing a little bit of that lighter color into the dark. Okay, So with that said, go ahead and go around, buffer those out, and then we're going to start to work in the background. Alright, so we're going to start to add another color into the palette here. And one of my favorite colors, can you tell, this is the Light Aqua. This is PC992. And I just love this color. There's just something so tropical and beautiful about it. Really, really fun to work with. Somebody send me a new one because I think I need to go on to uh, Blix and go buy another. And then um, I have this really beautiful blue. This is the denim blue. This is PC111. Great color combination between these two. Really glowy kind of color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with the light blue first and we're going to start to work in the hearts and then we'll work our way out. So what this is going to look like is I'm going to come in and very softly and I'm working on the side of that pencil again just like we talked about before. I'm just very softly bringing in some of that blue in here into the heart. And once I've got that, I'm going to go around to the rest of the hearts and do the same thing. Now what I want you to be mindful of in here is not to use that color in these little interruptions. So you see in between the hearts or in between the antennae there's an interruption there. We're going to have a different color in there so I really want you to be mindful of that. So we're just working inside of the hearts for this part. Okay? You go ahead and do yours. I'll do mine and then we're going to start to deepen. Alright, so you can see I've done all of the hearts in here. I'm going to come in with that darker color that I was talking about. So this is that denim blue that I was uh, talking with you about. And I'm just going to come in and start to shade in the bottom of my heart with some of that blue. Now you'll notice that I'm not using a heavy tension on it. I'm actually going quite lightly with it because it, it has such a pigmentation to it. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push a little bit harder right in here. Getting a really nice deep saturation of color. And I'm going to just sit right on the edge of those little ladybugs and put in that darker color. Now once I have that, I'm going to go all the way around and do the same thing. So go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine, and then we're going to blend those. Alright, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the light and then work my way into the dark here. So I'm just coming in and I made sure that that uh, color pencil was nice and clean, that white color pencil. And then I'm just working my way around from the light into the dark. And then I'm going to dip into the dark and start to blend it up. And you can see that when I do that, it gives it a really electric kind of feeling inside of that really beautiful heart. Isn't that gorgeous? So the transition is a little bit softer and a little bit richer. 
So you can see the difference between here and here. Much more scratchy in here, much more blended in here. And you can see that you know I can play and come up in here and really get this nice and soft and blended. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to go all the way around and do mine. And then when we come back, we'll start to pull that blue into the outside of the piece. So I know a lot of you have heard me talk about carrying color, and carrying color just means that I'm going to be pulling your eye from here to the outside. I want to be able to have a repetition of color in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that dark, that light blue and I'm on the side of my pencil here so you'll notice that that pencil is sharpened up and when working with this I'm working with it in a circular like motion so that I'm able to fill large areas of white in a very short amount of time. If I was working on the tip of that pencil it would take me a really long time to fill in the space but because I'm working on the side I'm able to do more with that pencil and so I'm always trying to think of different ways to utilize these color pencils to make them work for me and, and get more out of them. You know, So I'm just coming through here working on the top and I'm just starting to work through the side of the piece. So I'm going to go all the way around with just this very same technique and do just a nice light base of that light aqua. So you can see that I'm kind of dipping around the piece and moving the tile around. So this is another thing that we talk about in Zentangle is move the tile around to make it work for you. Don't contort your body to, uh, to work on the piece. Make the piece work for you. And so you're seeing that that pencil is still working in a circular like motion. You can see that it's covering a lot of area in a very quick amount of time. And I don't have to be overly cautious about it as I'm moving. All right, go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then we'll start to add a little bit of that darker color on the outside just to really get this thing to glow. Alright, so you can see that I have that really nice light base here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bring in that darker blue. And you'll see that I'm going very, very lightly at first. And we're going to do just a really nice light aura around the outside of the piece here. So you can see that I'm just starting to work around the outside edge, developing a really pretty shadow around the edge. So I'm just going to go all the way around in here and start to develop that really pretty shadow. Now once I've developed that shadow, and I'm only going to do half of this so that uh, for the sake of time and uh, getting you on your way, I'm only going to do half of the piece. Now I'll come back in once I have that shadow and I'm going to really press hard now and go right along the black line of the piece here. And you can already see that it's starting to pick up that glow that I just love. So go ahead and start to do yours. I'm going to go around and do mine. And then when we come back, we're going to work on a little bit of something I like to call wallpaper. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Take your time, enjoy, and play. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little blending on the outside edge just to get this to be a little bit softer. And then we're going to start to add in some of our wallpaper. So I'm just going to start to work on this area right in here. You can see I've got that really soft shadow and then I've got the harder line in there. And I'm going to start inside of that light aqua first. So you can see that I'm blending in that light aqua and then I'm going to start to dip into that darker color and look at how that starts to bleed into the light aqua. 
it gives it a really nice painterly like quality that I just I love to see inside of these pieces I love it to look almost like a watercolor uh, when you're working with these colored pencils so just getting in here and starting to move that darker blue outward towards the light here really really pretty so that when I pull back on the piece here you can really see it's got a really nice energy so very different here than it is up here much more scratchy in here much more blended in here it has much more flow and you can see how that pulls your eye outward on the piece which is really nice so go ahead and do your blending and then we'll come back and we'll do some wallpaper all right so you can see that I've got it really nice and blended in here I love the glowing feeling of the piece and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sharpen up on my blue pencil here this is that same dark blue that we went all around the edge with and we're gonna do something that I like to call wallpaper and wallpaper looks a little something like this now for those of you who have done this before you just uh, be patient with me here um, so what we're going to do is we're going to tangle with the color that we just worked with so I'm going to use Pronton in this and you can see I really like to go nice and slow with Pronton it, if you go slow with it it really comes out quite beautifully and I also like to vary up the size of the Pronton um, when I'm doing it because it just is more interesting for the eye. So I'm going to start with a really large pronton. Pronton means spring. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some smaller ones. So you're going to see me just start to work with this a little bit smaller. And then it'll go in here. that one's a little bit smaller and I love to get really tiny ones going in here too it just makes it more interesting for the eye so I really want you to be mindful as you're working now I've got a nice space in here for a medium one so I'm gonna just pop a little medium one in here and then I've got an area for a nice small one now you want to make sure that that pencil is nice and sharp when you're doing this. It definitely gives the advantage of making uh, the wallpaper a lot more clean. So you can see how beautiful that looks with the variation in size of the Pronton. So here I've got the opportunity to do a nice medium one. and then I might go ahead and add some smaller ones in here so we're gonna go all the way around and put in our wallpaper and so when I zoom out look at how beautiful that looks it has just such an interesting feel it's a little bit different than over here this is a little bit more glassy and this has got a little bit more texture okay Go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine, and we'll meet up. All right, well this is really starting to come along, really beautiful. So I'm not gonna ask you to go and pick up the greens that you were using earlier. So this is that lime peel green and then that grass green. And then I'm gonna ask you to also pick up that uh, the aqua, the light aqua. We're going to work on the center of our piece here. We're going to do our gemstone. And one of my favorite stones is Labradorite. There's just something very beautiful about Labradorite. It's, it's a gorgeous stone if you want to look it up. It gets these beautiful flashes of blue and green. Sometimes it even has beige or orange in it. It's just one of the most gorgeous stones I've ever seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do an ode to the Labradorite in here. And I'm starting with my green right in the center. And let me get this nice and large for you. So I'm just going to come in and just start to bring in that base tone of green. And I'm using the lime peel green first. So I'm just coming in and getting that going. And then once I've got that lime 
green in there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little dusting of the aqua right against that. This is like a little flash of blue that you would get in, uh, in the Labradorite. Now there's some Labradorite that's really, really dark blue that's really gorgeous too. So you can see I'm just kind of dipping back and forth into the Labradorite, or rather the Lime Peel Green. Just a little dip. Now once I have that, I'm going to come to the outer edge and I'm going to start to bring in some of that grass green. So you can see that I'm just working on the edge of it. And then I'll start to bring in a little bit heavier tension right along the edge in here. So you're going to see that pencil start to press a little bit harder and I'm just starting to bob and weave with it a little bit. I'm going to go right along that line and press really nice and hard. I'm looking for the drama here. And I might even carry that up and around just to get a little bit more drama out of it. Now once I have that, I'm going to grab for that lime peel green again. And I'm just going to start to dust the edge of where the grass green and the lime peel green are meeting. And I'm using a medium tension here. And I'm lightening up as I get closer to that blue. You can see that I'm starting to lighten up a little bit. You can see that I'm dipping into the edges of the dark in there. But as I get closer to the blue, I lighten up. Then I'll grab some of my white, making sure that that pencil is clean and I'm going to buffer the edge of the blue. You can see I'm starting to dip into some of that darker green in there. So really trying to develop the idea of Labradorite in here. really, really soft and pretty. So that when I pull back, look at how that just pops right off the page. So pretty. All right, well, you work on your stone, and then we're going to come back in, and we're going to do a little bit of work in the border, and then we're going to do some highlighting. All right, so in my first incarnation of this piece, I used some of the gray that we had in here and brought it into the areas around my gemstone. And I really did like that, and I thought that that was interesting. And then I took some black and brought it into the border. But, you know, I always like to offer you guys a different opportunity to express yourself. And so today I'm actually going to do some metallics in here and see how you uh, how you like that. So if you want to stick with the original, you can always stick with the original and do some gray around your gemstone and then do black in your border. But I'm going to use some gold.
Now I happen to have in my hand the pen touch. This is a really great uh, gold pen. If you don't have that, you could always use the Sakura gold. Um, that's a really nice one. This is also the Sakura copper. That's a really pretty one as well. And then, you know, uh, my favorite Uniball, they happen to have a gold that's quite lovely too. I just don't happen to have it in my hand right now. So if you're wanting to try the Uniball gold, let me see if I can find that real quick. Here it is. And I might even just use this now that I have it in my hand. So really, really fun, uh, bright gold, really, really fun to work with, the Uniball Signo uh, gold. All right, so what I'm going to do, and I think I'm just going to go for the pen touch since it's right here, is I'm going to go in to this area with some of that gold. And you can see that I'm just barely touching the page, and I'm being very mindful of the antennas of the, um, the little ladybugs because I don't want to get that gold on the antennas. And you know, later on you can always go back over it if you need to. So I'm just going to start to dip in around here and start to bring that gold in. And once I have that, you can see that I'm starting to get that going. And really the trick with the metallic pens is to just barely brush the page with the pen so that when I come back up, look at that, ooh la la super gorgeous with that really beautiful gold tone. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then I'm going to start to work out in the border as well. So when you start in your border just be really mindful of getting your pen going first and then just working around the edges of your leaves in here so that you don't lose the black. So I'm really being mindful to uh, keep that black going in there. And you can see, this may take a little while, but boy oh boy is it going to be really beautiful when we get it all done. So you can either do the black, you can do the gold or copper or whatever metallic you've got around. All right, so you can see I've already started with that and look at how pretty that's going to be with those two and they're really electric, super cool. All right, go ahead and do yours, I'll do mine and we'll meet back here. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way with that gold. Wow, isn't that so pretty? So I love to try different things with, uh, with a piece, and so I hope you'll try different things with it too. This is just really so lovely with the gold. It's fun to do, you know, different ways and try new things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to go in now with a little bit of white highlighting, and you know me, I always have to get that pen started on my hand here. And I'm just going to start right here in the center. I'm going to just come right in and add a little bit of a highlight right here on my gemstone. You can see I'm just getting that nice highlight to come in. And then once I've got that, I'll add a couple of dots just for effect, if it'll let me. So just a really nice soft gemstone in there. And then I'm going to come around to the, uh, the little ladybugs and I'm going to give them their eyes and I'll just very lightly come in over the black and just give them their eyes. So I'm just going to go around to each one and give them their eyes. And then once I have that, I'll go into the gemstones and add a little glimmer of white into the, the gemstones. So I'm just going to add little pops of white in there. You can see that that gives it a little bit of movement in here. And the key with these white pens is just to barely touch the page so that the ink gets going. So 
can see I'm just moving my way around here, taking my time. I think my pen might be on its way out. And then finally, you can add a little bit into the wings of your uh, ladybugs. So I'm just going to come in right here and add a little bit into the wings of the ladybug in here. So just a little highlight into their wings. I'll come over to this side and you can see that I'm being very mindful of where I put my hands because I don't want to smudge any of that white ink. So you can see how sweet that is on the ladybug. So go ahead and finish up your piece, putting in the little highlights, and then we'll come back in and we'll finish up our whole thing. Okay, so you can see I've had a chance to finish up that gold. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about was reiterating your lines. So I went back in with some of my black ink and reiterated my lines around the gold so that it uh, it didn't get lost in the gold. So you can see I really went in and cleaned that up and I also cleaned up around the outside edges of my ladybugs as well and brought in a little bit more of a black line in here and in here. So I hope that that helps you to see that it, it, get, it gives it a little bit more of a framing, if you will. So there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and sign mine. And I'm going to hide my, my little chop right here in the corner, I think right next to where my leaves are. And I'm just going to put in my little chop right there. And this lets me know that I've finished the piece and really taken care of myself during this time of doing some Zentangle. If you enjoyed the class today, please give us a thumbs up or leave us a nice review. And please subscribe to our page because I will be continuing to post new classes all the time and I would love for you to be able to take them. So if you enjoyed it and you completed the class and you'd like to share your work with us, you can come over to the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook and share your work with our community. We have such a nice group of people that are very supportive and wonderful and I feel so fortunate to have our group. So once again, thank you for joining us for the Ladybug Love Zentangle class. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to see all the different varieties of pieces that you guys create. This is me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, signing off. Bye for now.